Now we have with us Paul Felch. Hello. Right. Hello, Paul. And you are obviously the base. Yes, ma'am, I am. <laughs> I can't talk like that. I'll try. No, better not try. But okay, You might hurt yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but uh, you told me uh, that you're the philosopher of the group. So I, I have a, you know, the question I want to ask you is what are the rewards that you get out of your performances? What do you see happening when you perform? And, you know, I, we spoke a little bit about the influences of the arts. Can you mm -hmm. just tell us a little bit about that, how you feel about it? And I think the biggest thrill for me after a show is um, when I'll, I'll crack open the back door and I'll listen to the people going out to their cars mm -hmm. and they're singing one of our songs. <laughs> And they're just, just, they had a good time. See, to me, taking people away from their problems for like two hours or three hours of the day. When they first get to the show, they're like all expecting a, a great show. And then we come through. Mm -hmm. And for that three hours, their lives are, their, their mind is just somewhere else rather than their problems and the daily things, that they, the daily grind. Mm -hmm. And we're having the ability to take them away from that kind of stuff. That's... That's very important to me. Like I was mentioning earlier, we'll, we'll do a show of, in, in a giant banquet hall or, or, a, or a, a big convention center, especially, and it's catered. And you know that the staff has seen literally hundreds of shows and performances. And I'm on stage and I'll see the staff all crowded around the doors, taking in our show, just soaking it up. And I'm thinking to myself, they've seen so much stuff, and yet we draw them. To me, that's, that's my award. Mm -hmm. A gentleman who wrote us an email, and he said that um, in the 11th grade, I remember this kid, he had orange hair and was kind of mohawked up, combed up like this, and he had an attitude, and he had the chains and the black leather, and he just looked, didn't look like he wanted to be in that school. And he said that after he saw our assembly, he joined choir the second half of school, and then he continued on with choir in the 12th grade. And then he went to college, joined choir, and studied music. So now years later, I received, an, well, we as a group received an email from this gentleman who said he and his wife and his three kids are living comfortably in, in like, Iowa, and he's a music teacher. Wow. All because he just came to our assembly. Now, to me, that's one of the highest awards that we could ever get. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. How did you start out? I mean, what, what made you go into music? Um... How did that happen? I've always been an art artistic person. I've you know, tried drawing and all kinds of things. But in the fifth grade, um, a band teacher came through, Mr. Mr. Gross. And um, they were auditioning kids to join the elementary school bands, when, when, which they would take all the elementary schools and bring them together for one big concert at the end of the year. Well, I took up snare drum in the fifth grade because I was always tapping on things. My brother said, you know, you might be a good drummer. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll learn the drum. So I started off in drums, but then I met this kid later on during that big concert. He was in the fifth grade. He was four foot nothing, and he was just, sticks were flying. His name's Randy Jordan. I still know the guy. We're still good friends. He's a teacher and a, and a salesman at a local music store. But I saw him play the drums, and I knew that I would never be that good. <laughs> <laughs> then I... I discovered the trombone in seventh grade, so I thought that would be fun. So I learned trombone. Ended up being the uh, in the um, Michigan's All Star Jazz Band in 1981. Oh wow! Because I just naturally took to that instrument. Then I picked up a bass guitar along the way. Then after high school, I picked up a guitar. Then uh, the second year after high school, I picked up keyboards because I went to a college in California, Moore Park College, and I took keyboard out there. So. I've been learning all these instruments along the way. I haven't mastered any of them, but I've, I know enough about them where it helps me to create my music that I love. I just knew something inside me wanted to go toward music. I never realized I was a vocalist until I decided to go to college because I was bored with the going to work as a metal fabricator mm -hmm. and then working on weekends in bands. I've been in several bands, country, rock, punk, thrash, metal, wow. disco, you name it, man. I've tried it all, DJing, and I just said, Somehow this isn't it. Decided to get a, re a real job and go to college and get a degree. And so along the way, um, I had a class cancel on me, which I consider a fateful, th things happen with fate with me. I just say, okay, this happened for a reason. So I lost a, a, a four credit class. Well, then I found another three credit class on the last day, the last hour of uh, <laughs> trying to register. And I said, I need one more credit to get my federal grant money to come in. So I started searching through the music program and I saw no audition. 
men's glee club. <laughs> I jumped in there, figured I'd sing, and I'd just get my four point or my grade and get my money and life just goes on. Well, during that very first term, a barbershop quartet had come in and they were from the Lansing uh, Barbershop Chorus mm -hmm. chapter and they were looking for recruits. And they figured this is a great spot, you know, Men's Glee Club at, at the university. And I just had an idea pop in my head. I said, I've been in so many bands and the biggest grind that I didn't like was the setup, the tear down, the carrying of equipment and all that. I thought, four guys, we just <laughs> sing harmonies and we get invited to parties and we can make <laughs> some money for college because college kids are always looking for money and we don't have to carry anything. We just walk in, we all dress the same, sing a few songs, meet a few people and life is good but had no idea that it was going to take off wow. like this. Wow. Just totally amazing. But so, I never knew that I was a vocalist huh. until I got to college. I had been singing backups in bands and learning all these other instruments and then I found singing and said, this is where I belong. And at six foot four and a half and 310 pounds, people go, you need to be playing football. <laughs> but when I tell them, I'm a thinger, <laughs> they're like, right. So what do you really do? Sure. I said, no, I'm a singer. <laughs> go to my website and there I am. It, people still can't believe that I do this for a living. It's, it's mind boggling to me that I can do this. But how lucky that you found it. Yes, yes it you is. Know? And, and okay. most people go through their whole lives and they don't realize what their calling is. Some people re realize their calling early and they excel and they become mm -hmm. great. I noticed uh, during the interview with Mark, and I agree with him, that we're not the best vocalists. We, we, we know that. None of us is going to step out and start a solo career as a singer. But as a group, what we have is this magic, this combination of teamwork. Yeah. We've grown as brothers. We, we've grown, grown as close as our significant others, our wives. I mean, it's, it's like we're inseparable. We're just so connected. We know who's going to do what and where. As Glenn had mentioned during his interview, we know who's going to take a breath. And Chuck will say something, we'll know, oh, he's going to go on a tangent away from the scripted show. And we go with him. <laughs> and all the years of improv we've done early on allows him to do that. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I could go on for weeks. You give me a could. string and man, I'll, I'll just go. Yes, we've been trying to keep this all under control. <laughs> and all that will come out tonight, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. So, so what are your expectations for tonight? Farrington Hills, this great little theater. Um, this oh. concert tonight is going to be awesome. I know, you know, but how do you guys feel about it? Well, for me, it's, it's a little bit closer to my hometown. I'm, I'm presently in, in Clinton Township, so oh, this is yeah. my side of the state. Great. And I, I should have a lot of close friends that show up tonight. I mean, a lot of friends are asking me, begging me, can I come backstage because it's sold out. I'm like, yeah. no. <laughs> you had your chance for 18 years, and now all of a sudden today's the day. Not going to happen. But, but I, I love them good. dearly. I've tried to bring them. But yeah. my expectation for tonight is just because of the, the feel of the room and everything, it's going to be just a fun-loving show. It's yeah. going to be three men and a tenor at their basic roots. When we first started, we we're just fun-loving, bouncy guys who just love to do this. And, and the money's not there. I mean, people can go through their whole lives thinking money, 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 money. Mm -hmm. But you find the job you love, you're never gonna work a day in your life. And if you don't worry about the money so much, you just say, look, here's what I'm making. I'm gonna stay within my means here and just enjoy my life. And, and it, you'll have a better, longer life is my philosophy. And if the money happens, we may break next year. We have a couple uh, things on the hook Good. where we may break big time next year. The money's a bonus. Wonderful. The money's a bonus. I mean, it, we're not in it for the money. We're in it for the love and, and the fun. And we, we just, lo I love to share a good time. I have always told the guys in the group, I love to be the guy in charge of making sure everybody has a good time. Well, it is going to be a great night. And it's been so nice of you guys to take the time to sit and talk with us. And I know we're getting ready to set up and we got to get moving here. But thanks again. And um, I'm hoping everyone will join us uh, on Cultural Connection and find out all they need to know about Three Men and a Tenor. And we've got to have you guys back because now they'll want to hear you. Just like the guys who wanted to come backstage, we've got to do it again. <laughs> exactly. So, well, thank you, Nancy. Okay. It's been a pleasure. Well, thank you, Paul. Thanks so much. And thank you to everyone for joining us today on Cultural Connection.